yeah, you're going to be annoyed or you're going to be frustrated or you're going to have some stress, but try to use that energy for something, doing something productive. So work out a solution. Tell me about post university. What happened? What did you do when you got out of university? What I mean, what was your first initiative? Um, I was freelancing. So, like I said, I was um, as I was in university, I was freelancing, and I had a lot of clients as I left. So, luckily, a lot of my portfolio wasn't from university. I mean, not that I was. I mean, there was some dreadful stuff there. So, a lot of my por portfolio was projects that I've worked on for actual real clients. Um, so, I think about a year after I left university. I looked for my first job. Okay, what kind of work projects were you working on? Like uh, as a time? freelancer, yeah, as a freelancer, a lot of logo, a lot of branding stuff, uh, okay. website. Um, Flash was, you know, high of its, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. as it's ever been. Um, it wasn't a dying fad, but I was working on a lot of Flash stuff. That's amazing. Um, Actually, my first uh, senior designer job was uh, doing Flash adverts. Oh really? For yeah. uh, this major uh, tourist website in Spain, and it was just literally. Six adverts a day, just just you know, you know grinding at, yeah, just bashing <laughs> yeah. them out, and mostly you know, throwing those basic motion graphics. But it, it taught me so much, actually. Yeah. It's amazing what such simple uh, jobs just teaches you um, and develop. But you know what it is you. like. It's it's kind of one of those things where you have a you're doing one thing, but that skill set can be used elsewhere. You know, totally. stuff that yeah, you yeah. do, kind of animation, it can be used somewhere else. You might think of it for kind of motion graphics now, or kind of some typography projects or something like that. So it's all transferable, isn't it? Hundred um, percent. So definitely. yeah. So when I was kind of freelancing out of university, a lot of my projects was that, uh, and I was doing photography. And when I mean grinding, I was doing photography. I was doing part-time job. I was um, not not in design, by the way. And I had my own music studio, so I was doing jingles. I was doing soundtracks and wow. backing tracks. So you know, anything creative that can, could be done, I was trying to get involved with. Um, and then, like I said, a, about a year later, I wanted to kind of settle down a little bit more because I, I felt like I was getting into too much juggling too many yeah, things. Yeah, juggling too yeah. many things and I wasn't sure kind of where I was heading and you know I needed something a bit more stable so that's when I went for my first job which like I said I was quite lucky because I came out of university having a lot of projects of my own um, with a real client. So. so you could almost go in any direction at that point because you, yeah. you had projects I would assume that you had projects that spoke to different uh, clients. And yeah exactly so when I went for my interviews I remember my portfolio was so varied, like yeah. you said. So I had photography, I had you know design, I had some animation, I had some video, um, and then I chucked in. I never chucked in some music, but later on that kind of came came in handy as well as my jobs went forward. And I think that's sure. what helped me excel in some of the jobs that I did because I mean, it wasn't a slow process for me moving up. Um, so that was one good thing that, like I said, I learned to um, to exceed quite quickly. Sure. And kind of get on one project, then move on and move on and move on quickly. So kind of working through that ladder, as they call it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The career, the career ladder, as yeah, they say. That's that strenuous ladder, man. I just want to destroy that ladder. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is quite daunting because <laughs> really that ladder shouldn't be there. Yeah. It shouldn't be the driving force. But definitely, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> of course, of course. But we all have to climb that ladder at some point to get where you are now. Yeah, uh, either you climb or you build it under you. So <laughs> exactly. it's one of those ways. Definitely. How many times do you switch job? Uh, and how, what did, I, sw did you switch job or did you move to different? Yeah, uh, I did. Okay. Um, I, how many jobs have I had in the past? And these are working as a senior at different companies, right? Again, I started as junior. Um, okay. And then I think my last job was managing a whole team. So I built my whole team um, from the ground up um, at a uh, in-house team that was. Okay, wow. Uh, so, yeah, so kind of, I think, if I was to sum it up in one word, it would be speed, I guess, because okay. it's gone so fast, firstly. Yeah. And I think I worked my way up quite quickly because I was just used to that environment. I mean, the first agency that I worked for, I was the first junior that they actually hired. Um, sure. We were a team of four when I started. I mean, when I, when I left, I think it was about a team of 20. Um, but everything kind of from animation, like I said, from video to music to design, logos, it was all coming through me and then channeling through the seniors. And I just had to kind of work really fast to meet the deadlines. Okay, so, I think so this is a specific job. Which, which one are you talking about here specifically? So this is my first job. Oh, your I first started, job, yeah, okay. I started working for a marketing agency. Okay. Um, and I think that helped me, that environment working really, 
that speed of work really helped me. Um, so it was almost like a factory jobs. kind of environment, like, you know, what comes in gets pushed out type of thing? Um, it wasn't, not so, I wouldn't call it a factory. I mean, we had big projects that we worked okay. on for kind of three months, four months at a time as well. Um, but there was a lot of it, that's what I mean. So there was kind mm. of, you're working on about five to six projects at a time. Okay. Um, some with very tight deadlines, some with longer lead times. Sure. Um, but that kind of helped me to juggle my time and um, work on many projects and get involved in many projects. So when I moved on to different agencies or in-house, it helped me to get involved in a lot of projects okay. that I usually wouldn't or someone in that position wouldn't. Um, so that's really interesting. You actually, uh, you, you became very multidisciplinary early yeah, on. 100%. And that, I think that was really crystallized at that job, would you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because okay. um, we were a very small team. Of course. Um, but to the, to the client, we were, you know, a massive, you know, a London agency, um, but we weren't. We were just in a little, um, little um, stable. <laughs> wow. Uh, you yeah. know, we were in a barn. That's where our offices were. And, Perfect. you know, we had this perception of massive London agency, but it really wasn't. It was just me grinding on the cogs. You know? Awesome. <laughs> so, That's crazy. Wow. So that kind of helped. So when I was moving on to other, other jobs, that kind of small agency mentality help me working for big companies as well. So just, uh, just a quick question in regards to, you know, you shifting uh, jobs. Uh, what, was, what, what, what was the reasoning behind it? Was it because the, the company, I mean, uh, was it for your own sort of development? Did you find it? It or? was more personal. I mean, I was, yeah. I was traveling for my first job about an hour and a half. They moved and I couldn't travel. So there's different distance. reasons behind yeah, it. But would you say that with. kind of vigorous, uh, that frequent switching between different jobs, really contributed more to your um, yeah, I mean, experience? I'm sure it brought a lot onto your portfolio. Uh, to be honest, but, I, have, yeah. I started freelancing after that again. Because okay. um, I really enjoyed the freelancing and a lot of the clients that I was working with before, they kept coming back to me. So okay. again, I started getting involved in loads of different jobs. Do you, would you say you maintained freelance contract, contact uh, and, and work while you're working in-house in different companies? I did, yeah. Okay. I, it was only recently that I kind of severed those ties, I guess, because okay. um, work as I started progressing in career work started becoming more demanding so of course, I had yeah. to kind of give up that side of it and had to kind of solely concentrate on the one kind of job that I was doing. Sure so you might find a lot of people in our audience they're they're probably trying to juggle freelance and a full-time yeah. in-house job uh, you know give them give them a couple of tips in regards to how you manage that and uh, you know what's best for them is it is it is it a good experience to have uh, freelance clients on the side make that extra cash or you know, if, if it gets too strenuous, you know, it's probably best that you drop yeah, it. That's, yeah, I think if it starts affecting your social life, if you're not having a life outside work, then I'll say don't do it because yeah. it's not worth it. You've got to have that social balance as well. Of course. Um, and it, I suppose inevitably that's what happens, right? 100%, yeah. that's what happened yeah. to me. I mean, I wasn't seeing my family or friends for you know, months and months out, so. Mm. It takes a toll on your creativity as well. I exactly, because right? your mental state is not right. Like I said to you before as well, you know, whatever emotions you're feeling, it comes out in your work. If it's negative, then your work's not going to be great as well. So you've got to kind of change that mentality. And if it's because of taking on too much projects, don't get me wrong, getting involved in a lot of projects is a good thing mm -hmm. um, because it helps you have contacts because those contacts will, you never know when those contacts will come in handy or that skill set might come in handy for something. Um, so do it definitely, but if it affects your you know, mental state and your time management, then yeah, you know, you've got to decide, do you want to be, um, creative or do you want like Paul says do you want a heart attack to come with that <laughs> which I'm sure we don't so <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant so. wow excellent well you know you've uh, you've had quite a journey you've taken me through that whole story of yours um, and I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned um, I think some of the high points that you said is university is not necessarily a, hu a negative thing today like you can uh, you can gain a lot of positive um, experiences from it which is awesome. The fact that you're talking about uh, you know, juggling freelance with a full-time in-house uh, job uh, also, I think, contributes uh, to a lot of your experience, I'd say, right? But don't let it take a toll on your life. Talk to me about some of your bad experiences during this time of you know, your, your hustle period. Um, you know, maybe not necessarily when you were juggling freelance and a full-time mm -hmm. job, but just dealing with certain projects. Um, maybe it could be with I think you know people. You know, we 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 all know that design is very subjective, so people might throw on throw in different uh, opinions and thoughts, and you might not come to a, a final direction or conclusion mm. in in the work, and that can be that can affect the the, the workflow in many ways, right? So, uh, just talk to me about that. Some of the so, so, was there any bad experience? Not necessarily what I said, but anything else that you, you felt know, affected I, I, you? 
to be honest, whenever you have kind of, this is my strong belief, when you've got kind of a negative force, either to, like you said, a client or anything like that, or in career-wise or in a job-wise, I think there's no point of trying to work out that negative, is to use that energy to do more productive, positive stuff. Okay. So, you know, I'll say that to everyone. If there's something going on wrong with the job or any kind of client, yeah, you're going to be annoyed or you're going to be frustrated or you're going to have some stress, but try to use that energy for something, doing something productive. So work out a solution, you know, um, try to even work with the client because the client's there to work with you. They're not there to make your life harder. Of course. Though it might seem like they are, but, you Definitely. know, they're there to work with you. So, you know, don't be afraid to kind of use them as kind of like someone to bounce up ideas or, you know, you can even use someone who's outside of the design field who you don't work with to bounce off ideas. But I think any energy that's kind of used against for negative or to stress out or to kind of, you know, stomp your foot is just wasted energy. 100%. You, could, you know, you could use that energy for so much good. Um, I mean, I've had many, <laughs> but I've tried to stay by that and I think I have worked by that. But um, in terms of negative experiences, uh, there's been <laughs> quite a few. I think the worst one probably would be... Um, this is going back many years now, um, when I actually started my first agency. Um, it didn't kind of work out, so we had to kind of realise it wasn't working and we closed the place down. Um, but How far did you come? Do you even get an office? And yeah, and yeah, yeah, we wow. got an office. Okay. Uh, we were working with clients, okay. but I think it goes back to being too young and not knowing enough. Um, I kind of came out my first job to do that, mm -hmm. um, but it was, I guess also you've got to have the right people around you. 100%. Um, yeah. If you haven't got the right people, not so much, it's not in a bad, not bad vibes or anything like that, but just people that can contribute um, the right things. So if you don't have those people with you, obviously, and it's all on your shoulders, it's going to fall apart. 100%. And definitely. I think, again, it's one of those things you've got to learn from. You've got to pick yourself up and you've got to just, you know, like they say, dust yourself off and either try again or kind of, again, use that energy for positive or something a bit more productive. And, and that's what I did. And got back on my feet and <laughs> here Perfect. we are. Okay, well, awesome. So I think that's a really uh, a useful uh, tip in terms of mindset. And I think a lot of people will be struggling with this in, in the working field or even studying during their yeah. uh, you know, un university period. Um, I think that's what it is, isn't it? It's, it's like you said, even studying and whatever career-wise, I don't think the emphasis put on that so much. Yeah. I think a lot of emphasis is put on the achievements. If you haven't achieved it, it's it's wrong. It's you know, it's a negative. It's sure. a failure. It's not you know, it's it's a like it's, it's a cliche, but it's a learning curve. You know, definitely. If you haven't if you haven't achieved it, then that's fine. You can achieve it again. You can you just try again and or do it another way. You've learned from it. You know, you just know how not to do it. Basically, definitely. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think some of the struggles that people may be facing as well. I, I'm sure all of us have gone through this. Is the subjectivity of design. Um, you know, especially because you said you work with a team. How yeah. do you deal with that? You know, different opinions throwing, too many cooks, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, and you need, to, you need to arrive at a solution quick um, because you've got deadlines. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I've felt I've always worked better with deadlines, tight deadlines, under okay. pressure. I feel like I make the, you know, make the decisions faster. If you've got too much time, you're kind of like just faffing around and of course, yeah, trying yeah. to think too much and you might be going around, you know, sometimes when something's staring you right in the face, um, you'd be walking around it too much, but you know when you're under the pressure, I've felt that I've worked better that way. Okay. Um, kind of working the chaos, but yeah, I mean, there's a sense of you know there's too many chefs, and sometimes that works against it. But again, it's up to you how you utilize those chefs. <laughs> do you know, do you use them for good or do you kind of like just pat them off as you know negative voices or stuff like that? But again, again, I, I'll go back to mindset. So, you know. It can be a good thing to have too many people um, to help you make the decisions, but then you've got to block some of it out as well. Yeah. So yeah. again, you, you've got to consider it at the end of the day. That's what a working environment's going to be like. You can't just brush someone off because what effect will it have on them? You know? Of course. And they might not contribute again, and they might have some great ideas, and if you kind of let them down once, they might not come back and um, give you the great idea that they might have. I don't of know, course. something else. So, so yeah, I suppose you, you have to have a really good working uh, culture, like a good company culture to actually have people open, uh, not get too affected by criticism yeah. per so that it's personal. Um, and you can't be, like I said to you, as a designer, you know, you're very um, attached to the stuff or the designs that yeah. you do as the work. I suppose you, do you have to, did you say you have to get detached to it of, of, from it? I wouldn't say you get detached, but you should be attached to it because at the end, I'm still attached to a lot of the work I do and, you know, when I do
Well, isn't yeah, it? Because you put your heart and soul into it. Exactly, you put <laughs> work effort into it and, yeah. you, you know, something looks good to you might not look good to someone else. Like you say, it's subjective, but um, there's no point of getting down. I mean, if you're a designer and you don't have a strong, you know, skin, then it's going to be very difficult for you to carry on. But, you know, at the, at the same time, you've got to be strong-minded and you've got to be opinionated. Because if you believe in something, don't just, you know, roll over and just give in to what people say. You've got to still work at it to convince them or it doesn't matter about convincing them as long as you're convinced is the right thing then keep at it 100 percent. i think leadership is really important in these scenarios as well right so 100%. obviously someone needs to take lead and take that role to say this is where it ends and this is where we're gonna make the the choice right yeah yeah i guess so mm. so Fizan, just tell me a bit about how you keep your creative mind just moving and full of inspiration and how do you keep uh, your creativity fresh um i think it's one thing is try not don't try too hard to be creative because if you try too hard, you're going to struggle. Um, I mean, I just do anything, you know, like I read, um, meet a lot of, doesn't have to be inspiring people, just meet people, you know, you never know where that kind of glimpse of inspiration might come from. Or you might see something one day and I don't know, two years down the line, you, you might remember that and it might play into something that you're doing, some kind of work. So, you know, I, I take it from everything, you know, I, I, I don't lim limit myself to just you know, for example, I read a lot of books. I don't limit myself to just reading design books. So I read design books, I read biographies, I read um, fiction books. So, you know, it just helps your mind to loosen up. It helps that creative process as well. Um, so one of the ways is just switching off as well. You know, that helps the creative process. Meditating, just <laughs> it's going into a, a, a monk-like bliss. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta, and I think the one thing that people struggle to do right now is um, switch off. You know, like mm. I said, that pressure on the mind can be severe. Sure. So, you know, you've got to take your breaks and you've got to enjoy it as well. Like I said, meet people, like, just go out and meet people. And uh, like I said, you might just uh, meet someone that you never know might be your next, I don't know, big hit. <laughs> or, you know, might get you into some kind of uh, situation where, you know, you might... Uh, really pull something off great. hundred percent. Okay, cool. Um, in, just in regards to, again, uh, keeping your mind fresh, is there anything, any recommendations you would recommend, like specific books, uh, more oriented towards the design, or maybe not, maybe some mindset stuff that you've read, a biography that really, uh, really kind of, you know, drew some foundational practices or beliefs within yourself? I'll have to think about this one. All <laughs> That's all right. Go Take on. your time. There's a book somewhere. One of the books I read, which was recommended by my old colleague, actually, it was a Tipping Point, which really helped me, I guess, get into the psyche of how trends work and how trends become trends. So I think from there, I started really getting involved in or started getting nurturing myself to understand the human psyche. I know it sounds a bit deep, but I didn't delve too deep into it, but mm -hmm. it's kind of understanding the psychology of why we find something interesting or why um, a fad is a fad or why something trends um, so even kind of studies I mean it went into studies that Sesame Streets did about how children behave how children think so um, I started getting into that a lot and a lot of the stuff that I'm reading now or stuff that I'm um, watching online is to do with kind of like the, how the human psyche works. Okay. Um, like I said, it sounds deeper than it is, but... No, you know, I think I'll, that's I'll absolutely excellent. Surface. Yeah, of course. I mean, we're all spiritual beings and I think um, we need to leave that... It's really important to uh, reach that level of consciousness where, you know, you can start to really kind of delve deep into uh, your psyche, your own psyche. And you, yeah. I think you find this from other people's biographies, books that you read, mindset. And mindset is really important. I... I, I I almost cringe when you see people in the corporate world where they're just kind of living this life that's just on the surface and mm -hmm. very robotic almost, you know, right, and, yeah. and I think reading and, uh, you know, keeping that, you know, just, as you said, reading and uh, those kind of practices really, really help. So Yeah, and you can't limit yourself. Like I said, if you're a designer, don't just get yourself involved in just design or don't surround yourself with just designers. Of course. Because it's very limited, you know, you limit yourself you know, you're kind of, um, there's so many more people out there that's so much more, in, you know, interesting. Of and course. there's so many topics that are so interesting. Like I said, like, you know, psychology I find interesting, sociology I find interesting, you know, how society behaves, how an individual behaves, um, even science, you know, I, I started reading um, science books, uh, started reading Darwin. <laughs> so, you know, these kind of things, 
it might not be you might it might not be anything when you're reading it, but it might spark something later on. Um, but it's kind of like it just gets you know it gets tucked away. In, of course, in yeah. Your mind and you know it helps you just broaden your mindset and broaden your thinking, Definitely. especially which you need for um, to be creative. So thanks for all of that insight that you gave us. I think our audience is going to benefit a lot from a lot of uh, your journey, your personal journey. So, and we'll see you guys in the next video. So, thanks, Thank you. thanks, bro. Thanks for your time. <laughs>